Welcome back to the Game of Thrones world. Yesterday, we were finally able to defeat, after what I think was like a 30-year war, the upstart Andal Emperor, or slash kind of king in the Game of Thrones world, of the Rivers and the Hills. We finally repelled them and pushed them back, and I thought we should probably take a look around the world and sort of see what the state of the rest of the Seven Kingdoms were right now. So, the North was, at, at one stage, a vassal under the Mountain of the Vale, but something has clearly happened in the meantime. They've got their independence somehow. Or it might be the fact that the Mountain of the Vale were in an external war and the North couldn't join them in that. I'm not sure what's really happened. But basically, I mean, this guy was elected, of all things, which is kind of strange. But Winterfell is in the hands of a, a an old god's northman. So that's one of the Seven Kingdoms down. And then, of course, the Mountain of the Vale is currently under a massive amount of siege from the Mountain Clansmen. They aren't Andals, which is a step in the right direction. Now, they are wildlings. They are, well, they're not technically wildlings, but they worship the uh, the old gods of the mountains, which are the old gods, but it's like a weird sect of it. So we don't have any religious relations with them. They do count as infidels in that regard. Uh, and it does count as a foreign religion, apparently. But they are at least Westerosi, you know. It is a, it is a religion of this area of the world. And it's going to kick out more Andals, which I'm fine with. Especially if they were to take the Iron Islands, which is, of course, the war that they're going for right now. So that could also fall to an Old God-style religion. The Westerlands is a com is completely splintered. It's an absolute mess right now. Um, to be honest, they're, they're, they are... They can call themselves Queen and, and kind of only name right now because they're missing out on so much of the other stuff. But a lot of it has flipped over to, to Faith of the Seven, as you can see it. And they've sort of gone for quite a lot of, of change. We've got a couple of First Men and Old God House there, but we'll keep a close eye on things. Stormlands are also still First Men and Old Gods. And the Reach, weirdly enough, are also still First Men and Old Gods. But they do have the, the weirdly enough, the High Septum at the Sept of the Starry Sept. A Sept of the Starry Sept, that's hard to say. The High Septum is down there as well, so we'd have to go and deal with that at some stage. Dawn, though, of all the places, is fully Andal and Faith of the Seven. So out of the Seven Kingdoms, it's only the Mountain of the Vale, which is on the verge of falling, and the Westerlands, sort of, that have the uh, that the, that the Andals have successfully invaded. I think we've really sort of set a, a, a chain reaction going here. Now, if we want to match them, if we want to be able to revoke titles, if we want to have some sort of religious authority here... Our next goal becomes reform the religion. Try and unify the old gods worshippers. Try and collect some of these holy sites. And to be honest, we've already got uh, a winter wood specifically is under control of the old gods. All the way up there in Skagos of all places. We've got control of the gods fort, which is in, in Harren Hall or what will, would become Harren Hall normally. We need to flip that over to old gods. So I don't think we can even really start proselytizing too well over there, can we? Um, let's get Master Yorick on there instead. And let's see if we can just proselytize... Gods fought and move them back over. Oh, it's already first, man. Right, so what we'd have to do is find a way to... If we just kill this guy off, it should flip back over to... Oh, his hair, though, is Septon. How does that work? How does that work if they are... Oh, because they're ruler, right? They're ruler of Faith of Seven, so we'd have to kill her off. Man, it's going to be so difficult to do because, like I said, we've got no title revocation, not, not at least until we reform the religion, which is going to be some time before we ever get up to that. It's going to be a lot of work trying to keep this round together because a lot of our vassals are unfortunately Andals um, and are obviously a different religion to us. So it's going to take a long time to get that together. If we go search vassals, uh, ruler, yes. You can see that it, the majority are at this stage, phase of the seven. So we have a real, real upwards battle here. We could go for Storm's End. Um, we could just fabricate claims on that and just, just try and push it. They are already first men and, uh, and of course, the old gods there. But it's the only way we're going to be able to ever stop them, I think. So I think we'll start fabricating claims on Storms and try and replace God's Fort with a, a, an old God's priest. Besides that, I mean, it's first to the first men all the way beyond the wall. And then the Starry Sept, which is under the High Septum himself. So that'll be impossible to get at the same time. In the short term, we're going to focus on keeping the round together. We're going to focus on keeping things built up. And obviously, we, we actually don't have a capital Dutch yet. So I'm going to make the Duchy of Seaguard too. It will cost us zero gold, apparently. So it's just free prestige. There we go. We've actually got ourselves a Duchy, which is quite nice. And then our son, when he comes of age, is, is obviously going to be the character of the playing as here. So he is, uh, oh, oh, sorry, when we die, our heir, who has come of age, will be actually a pretty decent character to play of. 18, Marshall. Dutiful commander, we can obviously level up as we go. Page, I mean, we could chuck him in the, uh, in the Berserkers Society immediately and really, really build him up from a very, very young age. When do we start playing as this guy? Um, let me check the history of... Well, wow, the history of Seagard, I'm not really sure will help out too much. I know we were playing as him when he was quite old. I think he was in his 30s, so that will give us a very, very long time to build this guy up into a decent character. We could try and find him a marriage pretty quickly. Um, now, unfortunately, as I've sort of described a couple of episodes ago, even if we try and marry off, let's say that we got him married here to uh, Ellen Atali, without a matrilineal marriage, the AI is smart enough to cancel it within a couple of days. Um, so if we leave it, there you go. So she'll immediately break that. So unfortunately, we can only really marry for traits, alliances, things like that. Is it worth going for traits at this stage? Maybe we can find him a, a, a sort of prestigious or maybe even a skilled 
wife to try and help out the dynasty somewhat because there aren't still many members of House Mund kicking around. Weirdly enough, there are a couple of people who didn't actually join us when we became the, the Kingdom of the Rivers and the Hills. So this guy here, Sir Ambrose of the Cape of Eagles, a, a even worse than him just being an Andal Faith of Sigma. And he's also a knight, um, as in, you know, somebody who would be up for defending his faith a lot with that. So let's push a Dijon claim on this one and just grab it. We become his new liege and he'll get a, a negative opinion of us. But at least we get control of the province. I and mean, there's no one else in his dynasty. We might as well do it now rather than later. Or we could claim if one of our vassals is there. He's a first man, but he is a different... I suppose that would be at least be a step in the right direction, huh? We can't even demand religious conversion, because again, we are an unreformed religion there. So we can either push someone else's claim, which will give us uh, nothing. That guy gets some prestige, or we can push that one. This guy becomes our our vassal instead. Yeah, let's, let's prove to those Andals that they should be they should be serving us rather than the other way around. Let's do it. They will, they will honor their obligations. They don't need to. It's, it's just, just us versus some upstart Andal, Andal invader. Winter is coming to an end as well, which means we can actually focus on reinforcing our troops a little bit and uh, and going to war a little bit more. Desmond was happy to oblige me. We're trying to win this guy over a little bit. We might even be able to offer him vassalization at some stage. Oh, he can't accept for some reason. Uh, it's probably because we are not actually at peace. Negotiate annexation. Okay. Uh, if we had higher than 10 diplomacy, um, and if we were allied with him, we'd be able to annex him. So that's another thing to consider when we actually go for marriages. That non-aggression pact into a, into an alliance might end up in just fully them becoming our vassals, which is quite cool. Won't worry about that for now. You're more tolerable than I thought, or only a few words need to be exchanged between honorable rulers because we are brave. Um, sure, let's go for that then. Only a few words need to be exchanged between honorable rulers. Um, discussing most disparate of topics. I don't know if that's supposed to be an insult or not, hence why we have the brave trait, but hey, we'll go for it. Oh, he finds himself indebted to us. How would you like to be my newest vassal? Maybe we'll see after this war's over whether or not I'll actually accept that. I can't believe our allies actually send troops as well. That's nuts. We really, really don't need it. We're, it's fine. It's okay. This war's over. What we might even be tempted to do is, um, because this is part of our round, we can push something called a royal claim, I think it is. Um, oh, well, we can't check right now because we've got bloody troops raised. Right, drop those guys. I think we could push royal claims, which basically forces them to become our vassal. So there is obviously forced vassalization. We've got a bunch of other stuff as well. Yeah, royal claim on Blackwood. Just we become his liege and we gain 200 prestige. So we're basically proving that we are a powerful man, you know, capable of protecting him if he does become our vassal. I'm kind of tempted, tempted to go for it. We're obviously friends with him, but... I mean, we've got to try and unify our people as much as possible here. Now, what's going on with this as well? Oh, is that just where we had the Great War? Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's not a problem. Um, right, my friend. I'm afraid your your chickens have clocked, my my man. Royal claim on Blackwood. They will honor their obligations. They only got 600 men, so we would have been able to take them by ourselves anyway. But hopefully this won't piss them off too much, because we won't become friends with this guy. It'd be a real shame to uh, be a real shame to ruin that. All right, chase his armies down. There we go. I'm so sorry. This has just been an absolute dog pile. The poor fella. All right, let's merge together and just siege it down as soon as possible. Get it done as soon as possible. Then we can focus on some more of our peacetime stuff, making sure that, you know, succession's going to go smoothly, that type of thing. Just salt it. There we go. All right, 50, 59%. Is that all we got? I was kind of hoping that that would, that would be enough, seeing as we killed all of his armies. <gasps> Wait, did those guys... Did those guys break away? What's going on here? Wait, 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 what? Why are we hostile to Wayfarer's Rest? That's you. De attacking King Desmond of Blackwood. Why are we hostile to our vassal's troops? Um, am I going crazy here? Attacking King Desmond of Blackwood. Oh, he's trying to invade the same province as us, despite the fact that he's our vassal. How weird. I'm going to go over there and kick his troops around, despite the fact that he would be our vassal because we've all broken apart. He's tried to he's tried to use this opportunity to undercut us. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and kick his head in for that. Gain the trade just all trained fighter. We gain trained fighter. That's cool because it means we can take on a squire. I think I already took him on as a squire. Um, I think I have anyway. Let's go and check the uh, the mining titles. Uh, yeah, squire, he's already there. That's okay then. So I guess we can now force him to train as well and try and turn him into a good fighter. Oh God, he's a lunatic. Character is start raving mad. Oh, well, never mind. Um, don't talk about this. <laughs> Starks, get it? Start raving mad? That's good. All right, we're going to kill our vassal troops because I'm feeling particularly vengeful. Also, we hate these guys. These are our, don't forget, these are our, our enemies. We have a blood feud with House Vance and House, uh, House Tully. So any opportunity, this is just, we can use the opportunity to just burn their cast down for the fun of it. We're getting nothing out of that besides just, just bitter and twisted vengeance. Challenger. Oh my God, Ambrose, our courtier, wants to challenge us for our position in the... Our position in the society. We've got 197 personal combat. He's got 80. I think we've got this in the bag. Yeah, I thought so. I, what were you expecting, Ambrose? Guess he thought because we were old, we were vulnerable or something like that. What a what a dishonorable piece of shit. All right, let's uh, let's take out the rest of his army and just go for as much siege as we can.
That's a little bit safer to assault now. Let's go for these in. Night two, 100%. Thank you very much. You have to now bend the knee. And we trashed one of our vassals there. Just for just for shits and giggles, really. Is he that bothered? Oh, wow. We can owe oh, Lord Lothar a favor. He's first man in Andor. He's a good man. He's a good man. I trust him. Let's take uh, let's, let's take all of Siege Leader traits because that's fantastic. Thinking of new ways to make Prince Desmond like me is hurting my brain. He actually isn't too bothered about the fact that we did just subjugate him. Um, let's invite him here for some sightseeing and, and make sure our vassals like us as much as possible. And this guy, like I said, goes back to being our vassal again. Probably a little pissed off about that. There we go. The, the betrothal has gone through, which I'm actually quite surprised by. So now Lanessa, Lyessa Stark, uh, the woman whose husband we met. Wait. Oh, her brother's the Storm King of the Stormlands. Shit. Well, that's a really good alliance. Wow. So our next character's brother-in-law is the Storm King. And we are also married into House Stark. That was like a, a, a big political play there. So it's a wedding, a wedding piece for them. Then. We've got 70 gold. It's not a huge amount, I will admit. But we might as well have oh, 75 gold to host the bloody thing. Fine. We'll put the ram into a slight bit of debt. We've got another son called Christopher. Christopher Mudd is a great name. That's obviously named after the Hammer of Justice. But we've started a theme, so we're going to go for it. You are going to be called Earth. Earth Mud. Welcome, young Earth Mud. I'm going through this massive list that I've compiled from all the comments in Discord and whatnot. So what have we used to educate you so far, then? Um, are we good? Oh, right, because they've, they've finished most of their education. It's cool. Okay, so we can basically train him in anything now. Let's go for Thrift, because he hasn't really got anything going for him at this stage. We've filled our ambition up. Five children. Can we do anything else? Forge a bloodline. Tame Valyrian steel. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. There's a lot of Valyrian steel around in the world right now, because, of course, Valyria still exists, so they can just craft new swords, I would assume. Um, we can also try and rank up if we feel like it. Fuck it, let's do it. Use our influence to just pass through, but then we lose prestige and glory. No, that's not the way. That's not the way we do things here. So this guy has 188 personal combat versus our 202. My god, he actually might kick our ass. Um, let's get into shape to start off with. Get up, make sure that we're prepared and trained ready for the fight like Rocky. Let's also request some military training. It might be a bit pointless now that we are uh, 61, but hey. Skip the dual engine. Do you think we can skip it? I think we're at the stage where we've seen enough of the dual engine to know how it works. Yeah, we're good. I think that was, a, that was a not necessarily a safe duel, but it was obviously in our favor. Nice work. Okay, cool. So now back up to the level of wolf. I'd love to forge a bloodline with this guy, but the chance of getting 2,500 more prestige, unless we get very, very lucky in this society, it's not really going to happen. Bankrupted the realm for a completely unnecessary wedding, but you know, it's kind of important having a big feast for all of our vassals when this, the, this is the first ever feast the realm has ever had, so it's going to be a nice way to build up rapport with some of the guys here. Uh, Lord Carol the Quarreler of Haraway's Town is apparently ironically named because he's quite happy with us being here, or coming to our feast, I guess. Now Sorella of Haraway Tower and Eden of Haraway Tower stand before the gods to take up. Wait. We just attended someone else's bloody marriage. Oh, whoops. Never mind. There we go. We're having our own marriage now. There we go. Um, so, it's giving bizarre repulsive evidence concerning concerning sexual preferences. Oh, no. My priest? It's not much of a shocker, is it? The guests have finally arrived. All is ready. The servants have worked all day and night to prepare to decorate the dance hall. Less is grand and spreading. The castle has never looked lovely. And all we had to do was spend every single money we've ever made. Welcome to the wedding. Oh, wow. A lot of people turned up. Shit. My king, I write on behalf of the Bank of Valyria to express consternation in the actions of your bannerman, Hastin Bracken. Um, he's not paying back his debts. Typical, typical, typical faith of the seven, am I right? I'll issue a reprimand. Oh, do we want to pay the interest on behalf of him? Well, we can't, the, the treasury can't take it right now. Peace is winding down, only the betting remains. Edin and Sir Edin, Edin? Look, this is the, fuck these guys. Good God, I'm at two weddings at once here. Because we had like a joint wedding, save on the cost a little bit. Feast is winding down, only the bedding remains. Potty, Mix, and Lyessa are stripped of all the garments by the revelers who make a bawdy joke along the way. A fine tradition. There we go. And how Stark, you're welcome, by the way. We've, we've provided the means for them to survive. So oh, this is cool. Seagarga has benefited greatly from being the capital of a prosperous realm that is the kingdom of the rivers and the hills. Immigrants are flocking to the city. So we can build a large first man city. That's what we're after. It costs us 400 gold. Oh, shit. So what do we do? We just gain a city? Or... Oh, we're upgrading actual Seaguard itself then, huh? Okay, I mean, I feel like we don't really have much of a choice. Man, it's going to set us back for so long in terms of the amount of gold. We're just going to have to sit around and, and hope that we can build up a, a shitload of gold. Our revisor resigned, I guess, only out of anger for me wasting this much money. Good God. Oh, creative gold ingots. Yeah, sell them off. 32 gold for a creative gold ingots. Are you mad? What about our trade master? Has he accrued any money that we could ask off of him? Nothing. Is there, like, righteous imprisonment? We could try and imprison someone and... Uh, target is in hiding, so we can't imprison him. This guy we could imprison. It takes money. hasn't got any money. Uh, this guy's got 56. Oh! Lord, Lord Vance might go into rebellion. Wouldn't that be a shame? Damn it. <laughs> I was happy to be going into rebellion there. Okay. Um... He's the first man. I'm not in prison. The first man, despite the fact he's got more than enough gold to ransom him out. I'm not doing it. Uh, first man, Andal. Took him in prison. Took him in prison. Uh, Andal, again. I mean, Andal, Faith of the Seven. Absolutely get him in. Fuck's sake. I want, I want, trying to get some of these people to go into rebellion so we can revoke their titles. 
this is not working. This is actually hilarious. I'm, I'm, the one time I don't want people to actually go into prison and we've prisoned every single bloody one of them. My God. You can only ransom out Lord Brendan Stoteworth, so let's kick him out then. Um, how about the Oubliette? He is our rival. He's our rival and we have a blood feud. How about the Oubliette, huh? 50% chance of us losing the trait kind. You know what? We didn't lose the trait kind, so we're only doing it against our enemies. Who are you? Uh, let him rot, let him rot, let him rot, let him rot, let him rot. What about House Tully? Have they done anything wrong? Have they thrown his kid in prison for any particular reason? No, that's a shame, huh? Never mind. Nice. Hey, there we go. Dorse was born to potty mix of the rivers and the hills and Lias the Stark named Miriam Stark. Oh, for fuck's sake. Well, never mind. I thought House Stark had, like, resurrected them, but no, it did quite the opposite. So there is only now Lyessa and her mother of House Stark that remain. So it's, it's all down to her because she's 45. So it's literally all down to Lyessa and her husband. God damn, this could be a problem. The king. Andals are sailing in great numbers across the narrow sea to Westeros. Oh, God. Okay. Um, we can set the, peace, the Andals peacefully via marriage. No. Offer a marriage to my bannerman. Uh, Andals settlers. No, no, no. I don't, want, I don't want to do that. We'll throw him back into the narrow sea. Fight. Br bring it. I think our realm is strong enough now to repel any Andal invaders, any Andal settlers. I'm sure we can we can annihilate them in no time. Might be rising these troops a little bit too early. This guy's taking side with the rebels because he's a... You traitor. Well, I guess we can revoke his bloody titles then. Uh, oh, wow. Holy shit, a lot of them joined our enemy. This is good. Oh, more to the point, these guys. So this is how we're going to be able to revoke their titles. We might not have access to religious revocation, but my god, can we just revoke them if they're traitors like this? Unreal. How, look at how much they splintered the realm. I mean, it's kind of a good thing, in a weird way. Um, also kind of a bad thing, but hey, we'll, we'll see how we see how we get on here. So, man, may not do doing job. I'm not upsetting the council right now. Where is he? Where, where is he? He's not anywhere. <laughs> I was kind of hoping he would be around so that we could go to war with him. 16,000 events born troops. My God. Um... He's valuable. Let's keep him as a prisoner. It's not for me to play the support, my lord. So I can beg a plea for arms. I'm the lawful king of the rivers and the hills, and those who deny it are traitors. So Ambrose is such a rebellious vassal who refuses to bend the knee, bend the knee, or face the axe, or is more valuable to be kept as a prisoner. We just revoke his titles. No, not yet. Keep him as prisoners. Keep him as prisoners. We'll lower our fear, but we can just revoke their shit afterwards if we if we're able to get through this. Right to the seven uprising of Reverend. Oh, Turnbridge. Oh God. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, so, so where are those? Faith of Seven Uprising is there. We've only got. Oh, he sent his army over. That's good news. Okay. Can we? Can we just? Can we just kill him? Can we just kill them dead? Is that okay? I mean, I don't know why I'm asking permission. I, I am, I am the king here. I am, I am the king now. We're just gonna kill them all dead. I like that they dropped uh, 4,700 troops in at half morale. That's obviously quite nice. Oh God, we've got a challenger. We've got an Umberry. Is that Sarnel? It is. Okay. Let's do it then. What's he got? Uh, to, I'm, I'm saying what's he got as if going over to him on the map is going to let me see any different to his bloody character page. 201. We are at 225. 20 points in it. It's risky. I'm going to skip it just so that we don't have to waste too much time dealing with jewels and we can focus more time on annihilating them. Yes. Prestige. Now chase him down. Nice. He's strong never rest. Cool. We led our men into battle and gained some... Oh, that was our goal from the Berserkers to actually go into go to war. Yeah. I really, really, really wanted to go to war like this. Yeah, that was absolutely what I wanted to do. Right. Burn these guys down. Tracers. 14% war score for Siege in the Cape of Eagles. Right, let's go down and get some meat on, on the, our, our side of the war. Dennis Tolly died in suspicious circumstances. Oh no, how tragic. Um, I'd be so interested to find out who killed him. So there's only Robin Tully left? Have we got any plots going right now? We should really have a plot going all the time. Obviously, we don't have any right now. Okay, fine. Um, what about like, uh, I mean, we could just execute this guy. Change fear by 10. But I want to revoke his title. Um, six other members. It would really stop it though, wouldn't it? Do we go for vengeance or do we go for the sensible play of revoking their titles and ensuring that the is is personal vengeance more important than the vengeance for the realm? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. I, I think we'll leave it. I think we'll leave it for the timing. Let's kill these rebels. Then we'll go back and we'll defend the castle, which has a lot of people. Shit, this might have been a bad bad call. Okay. Let's hope we don't lose too many men during this battle. Our uh, pay interest on behalf of my battlement issue a reprimand. We, we have no we have no money. Unfortunately, we can't afford anything here. Get everyone to attach to us. And then we should have a much, uh, like a huge army, much bigger than what they've got going on right now. Okay, come on. There we go. That, that'll do. That's probably more than enough, right? Wait, what? We were leading troops. No, you can't do that. We were fucking leading troops. I need to go and watch that back because I'm 100% I'm certain we were on the flank there. Fuck. Well, then it's lost. We've game over. So that that's... <clears throat> he let us out of prison. <laughs> he 
He took our spear and he let us out of prison. Well, that would have genuinely, I think, been a game over because it's an invasion of the rivers and hills, which means we'd have lost all of our provinces. Or we might have just gone back to being the Lord, the Count of Old Stones. Well, that's hilarious. Um, what the fuck happened there then? We were, we were. I remember putting us on that flank. I don't know whether we resigned for some strange. I don't know. Maybe there was an event that we went through. God knows. But this was going to be difficult to win now because he's got. All we've got to do is crush all his armies, I guess, right? Okay, we're abs absolutely going to do that. Okay, chase him down. Counter siege to the capital to start off with, and then we'll chase him down. Go, thank you. Uh, liberated. There you go. Right, kill it, kill his men, and that should be the end of the war. He's, he's an unlanded character. Twenty-six percent. Right, keep chasing. Never stop. Hundred percent. Get yeah, fuck it. Get out of here. You're fucking roasted. Who are you anyway? Uh, who are you? Just kill him. Plot to kill. Zero percent. I love that it's zero percent there. Why? Um. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Uh, forfeit the Bay of Claws. Give me, give me everything. You forfeited that. You may rebel. Who cares? Let them rebel. Oh my God. Why can they rebel again? Come on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them they forfeited everything. But. Yep. Okay. We actually did get some of that then. Good. Right. Who's rebelled? Just these two guys. That's fine by me. What about you? Can we revoke your tail as well? Why? <laughs> so annoying. We could execute him, I guess. No, that's apparently tyrannical. You know what's not in the Ubliet? In the Ubliet with you. Yeah, we'll, see, we'll see about tyranny, my friend. Okay. That's a little annoying, That despite the fact that we defeated them in a rebellion, we now have to defeat them again in a rebellion because of uh, reasons. Oh, by combat. Alistair Vance comes up from his cell and the guards throw him at your feet. I've come for justice, he says. By right of birth or blood, I demand a trial by combat. So Darren Holt will be my champion. So Darren Holt is going to die. I'll handle this myself. Yes, Emon. Vengeance, Emon. The trial of combat between Alistair Vance and King Emon is ready to begin. This is so cool that the guys who, who destroyed our dynasty originally, we have flipped it right on their head. One mistake is all he'll get. Attack with speed. I avoided his forceful attacks and he is instantly killed. Taking his eye out, I thrust my bastard sword hard into his chest. The surprise is clear on his face as blood fills his mouth. I must have hit something important. Die. Sidarin so crumples to the ground. You wipe the blood from your da dagger. The deed is done. From your dagger. The deed is done. He is dead. Valamogulus. He will now be judged. Gods were not in his favor. Is he now guilty? Oh my god. Uh, can we just revoke his title now that he's guilty again? Or do we send him to, send him to the wall? Execute him. Execute him. Hung, drawn, and quartered. Hanged, beheaded. Can we do anything? Can we drown him in mud? That would be cool. <laughs> That's our punishment. We have a mud drowning pit. Um, hanged, hung, drawn, and quartered. Sounds the best way. That sounds the all that their house deserves. Excellent. Excellent. Another, another member of their dynasty dead. That's what you get for challenging us. They've gone into rebellion too. What a shocker that they would go into rebellion after we, in a trial by combat, defeated his champion and slew his, so his brother, I think it was his father. It was his father. All right, let's do it. This is the Rob Stark equivalent of their household. You know what? We're going to put them to death. We're going to put them all to death. You know how his story ended, don't you? Some text. Oh, God. Give them gold. I can't afford any of these. Fuck it. Fine. Okay. They are winning this war for us, I guess. Right. Climb him in irons. Climb him in irons. That's him dealt with. Oh, my God. We actually did just get him in irons immediately. Right. Let's deal with these wars. This is ridiculous. So, who, who's actually rebelled here? What are they calling Ridge? This one? Okay. I mean, this will take all about two seconds, given the amount of troops they've got them. Kill them all. Chase them down. Their, their capital's gone, but it's, it's unfortunately going to take a very, very long time to actually get enough war score on this one. I don't know why. Um, Battle of the Stony Scepter. We lost 5%. But besides that, yeah, we, we just need to get a little more occupation, I think. This one, I'm not concerned about. This is a single province who apparently is under a king, of all things. Um, that's fine. We'll leave those guys to it. They are actually getting a little bit of successful siege there, which is very strange, given that they've done it with all of about 300 troops. We've got a lot of vassals kicking around. I might even send the vassals to go siege down his capital. We have no allies to give orders to. Citation needed? Have they joined us in the... Oh, right. So they haven't joined us in... This is a war for independence. This is a war like a rebellion to stop us taking his titles. Fine. Okay. Another trial by combat. Ambrose Clapton. Clapton? Clawton? Cl that can be pronounced in many different ways. In, in, in British English, at least. Um, fine. You know what? I'll handle this myself. Another man to die. Oh, we're actually fighting him personally. My faith in the gods give me strength against his and or false faith of the seven. Strike. It's all over now. He's at our mercy. Oh, my God. He's up again. Okay, my faith in the old gods do give us strength. Strike again. He's dead. He's gone. That's, that's proof right there. That's just science that there are clearly no... There, there are no seven gods. Only the old gods. It's just... You can't even argue that. But science. Son. Rickon Stark. Oh, the slow Rickon Stark. Look, it's better than no Stark. Okay. Um, thrift for you. 
thrifty young Recon. These not only bear in mind this is our grandson and the grandson of uh of House Stark, very distantly, but look at his bloodlines. Mud and Stark together till the end. Mud and snow. I wonder if they could form like a hybrid bloodline, that'd be kinda of fun. More Andals. Oh, are you kidding me? Fuck off. Okay. I think this is gonna be constant, isn't it, until we finally crush the Andals. Fine, okay, they're on their obligations, I'm sure. Oh! We gain brilliant commander. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Um, prepare to die, Packled and Scum. <laughs> Packled and Scum, that's so good. There we go. Brilliant Commander. At the age of 64, my man is pushing up almost to 30 martial. That's insane. This guy has led a life of just nothing but constant warfare, so it's kind of understandable. You're gone, and uh, I'm going to revoke that. I'm going to revoke that the second we can. Forfeit that. Goodbye. This has worked out pretty well. There's me saying I have no idea how we're going to revoke all these titles short of uh, reforming the religion. Turns out you just got to wait for them to go to war with you constantly. Another one. Then I was, I was surprised. Harston Bracken. It's a real shame. Oh, this guy's fighting for himself by the looks of it, because that is uh, that is his own portrait in the in the response there. Nice. Okay, so he is he's he's okay. He's not, you know, he's not a particularly weak candidate at all. But he's nothing compared to the might of Emin. Yes, Emin the Bookworm. Is that what you'd name a man who's like this this absolute monster in combat? Okay, so critically game the Bookworm. Uh, my will is strong, and the gods protect me. They do. They they do. It do be like that. It's all over now. He wants to, oh my god, he wants to either surrender, or we can shout, no you foul cripple, and kill him dead. You know what? Back on your feet. You're a first man. You could potentially convert back. Gain the 20 prestige. And the gods are in our favor. I think we can now, we could just execute him and not lose the, because obviously he lost it at trial. The council are fine with it. He's been found guilty. Um, we could send him to the wall. If we execute him, I think it'll piss off his kin, unsurprisingly. Um... Merciful send him to the wall. What if we let him rot in the cells? Can we then revoke his title? N he didn't even rot in the cells. Wait, that was him. That, that was absolutely him. What? Okay. Um, Not a fan of that. He's acted dishonorably towards us. There you go. You are back in the cells like I said you would be. Prepare to die, crab scum. <laughs> it's our battle cry now officially. Cool. Uh, so we're at minus 81% because apparently these Andals have uh, sieged, <laughs> sieged our capital. I didn't even notice. It's a problem with so many different rebellions over over what is essentially the size of a continent, right? Challenger has appeared. The Boar Mohor. Okay, Boar Mohor. Uh, you're not that good. Let's skip the dual engine and absolutely annihilate him because we've got just so much more skill than him. You keep proselytizing. Oh, God. We're losing the battle here, aren't we? My God, we are seriously, seriously losing the battle. Okay, pick an ambition. Um, win the war. Win the war, I think, is absolutely fair. Raise an army. Oh, my God. Uh, raise in Sea Guard. No, we don't want them in Sea Guard. Ugh. What if we then... Okay, okay. Here's what we'll do. Run as fast as you can. We will attack into Sea Guard. And uh, as we get there, we'll hire those troops. I think that actually might work in our favor. Can we get our... Oh, whoa, whoa, wait there. Okay, we can get our allies to attach to us. Hurry up. Hurry up. Run. Run, 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 run. Thank you very much. There we go. Is that everyone? Are we all here. Attach, attach, attach. Where's she? Where are your troops? Oh, bloody hell, they're all the way down there. Okay, don't worry about it. We've got to attack now, otherwise it's, it's actually genuinely now or never. Right, when are we going to get there by? The 6th of 10th moon, so about now. And then we raise the army, and we've absolutely crushed him. I hope. I pray that we've crushed him. Come on. Oh, it's going to be close. Actually, no, it's not. We've got 27 marshal in the sense what am I talking about? There we go. That's how you deal with Andals. Right, counter siege the capital. Excuse me. Counter siege the capital. Unless you've got boats on the right. Apparently, the counter siege shortcut raises boats, as we found out a thousand times. Stalwart Defender again. Appreciate that, despite the fact that, you know, they're clearly. Saint. Saint Archmaster John. I think you're getting him confused with, uh, you know, that guy was a Baptist or something. All right, chase him, chase him down. Kill them all. 60 gold. Thank you. Oh my god, we're not, we're not in debt anymore either. Kind of a surprise, considering we've had our troops raised for the past 100 years. Gwen Leak. Why don't you piss off, Gwen Leak? Thanks. I'm, I'm, I've been working on my one liners a little bit. He will forfeit Butterwell. Goodbye. Oh, for fuck's sake. Find your judgment harsh. No longer denies your dominion over Pink Maiden. Oh no, not your Pink Maiden. What a terrible shame. Um, okay, we'll be we'll be taking Pink Maiden as well. I think do we not have to dish out some titles? Yeah, we've got four duchies. We'll give those out to to good, strong first men. Whoever whoever those are, if we have any good, strong first men, that is. Nines. Come on, it's goodbye, Pink Maiden. Okay, and then we will, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to be uh, forcing demands on you, and then we can't revoke your title unless the event pops up, I think. We'll forfeit, Pink Maiden. You will never be the Lord of Pink Maiden, he says, as we become the... Whoa. <gasps> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my god, no, 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 that's bad. Sorry, I thought it was the Mountain of Vale lost their shit. Uh, 
Wow, there we go. The Andals came late to the Westlands, long up there, taking the battle on top of the kingdoms of the first men in the Riverlands. Uh, excuse me. The first and the Warlord to match an army throughout the hills met a bloody end at the hands of the Westermen. Second and third attacks were dealt likewise, but more and more Andals began moving west in bands of large and small. Kings of the Rocks surely saw their doom ahead. Damn it. It's taking Castamere. We might have to do something about this. Shame we can't even launch any religious wars. Oh, he crushed the, crushed the Veilman as well. Damn it, that's a real shame. Okay, the Mountain of the Veil are definitely on my kill list then. Because if they take the Iron Islands, we have some we have some serious problems. We have some real, real serious problems. Um, Northern Ironborn War of Emancipation, that's irrelevant. Invasion of the Iron Islands is 82%. There's nothing we can do to stop this either. We've just got to sit and watch these. I wish we had more power to stop these bloody Andals. We can't offer to join wars with other first men against the Andals. We can't use any holy wars against the Andals. There's no, you know, war of, of liberation amongst our own people. It just doesn't make any sense. We haven't got anything to stop them. I can't see any way we can possibly stop them. 66 years old. And my god, we are going to go back to being the head of this damn society. 284! Holy shit. I feel like we're not going to win against this guy unless we, uh... Right, let's, let's go for the risky... Let's go for the risky attacks. Try and get this duel done quicker. Jump attack. Not a great start. Um, right, dodge. Fuck. Uh, do a jump attack. This might be a problem. Whoops. Well, we didn't lose anything, so it's not a huge problem. We did lose our Weirwood Spear, don't forget, so we do need to go for another one of those at some stage. A wandering warrior has requested an audience. It appears as if the entire court is above with stories of his exploits. This Halsey the Noble is seemingly of great renown. He wishes to wear fealty to me, having heard of my relation to the legendary Tristan Mudd. Ah, Mother's Grief. Oh, is that our... Oh my god, I didn't realize we had an ancestral Valyrian sword we've got to try and track down then. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Welcome aboard. He's so good. Harsley the Noble. Look at him. Brawny, genius, formidable fighter, authoritative, ruthless. You might make for a good vassal. So what was it? Oh, lost it. <laughs> so what was the name of the sword again? So let's go back. Mother's Grief. Where is that? Um, search all. Mother's Grief. Uh, apparently House Mud's ancestral Valyrian sword. Mother's gr 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 Grief. It's gone. It's gone where? Was he buried with it? Mother's Grief. Fine Valyrian sword, blessed by the... Okay, okay, let's go to the... Maybe maybe it's just this isn't working. Let's go to the show me the owners of the Valyrian blades. Swords. Mother's grief. Mother... Oh, bear with me. This could take a while. What I can tell, it's actually not on there at all. So it must have been lost somewhere or, or buried with them in the, in the tombs of uh, of House Mud at Old Stones. Yeah, this is um, it's a problem. I don't, I don't know. See, no, maybe if we make Old Stones our capital, there might be an event that fires it. I don't know how the hell we're supposed to track down our sword. Ooh, 75 gold. Absolutely, my man. Um, we've got to dish out some more tiles as well. But we'll deal with this first, and then I'll do some little bit of round management, I think. I don't know how much longer our guy's going to live, so I might have to even give out some... Whoa. Storm King William. Fucking Faith of the Seven. Are you kidding me? House Durandon. Oh. So he was House Swan by the looks of it. Yeah. And House Durandon died up, so he was able to assume the the legacy of, of, of his ancestor. So his mother must be a Durandon. Wow, that sucks. Another one of the another one of the seven kingdoms lost to the faith of the seven. Can we revoke this title now? Sorry. Can we uh it would demand its head as well as all Whoa. All lands. Shit. How many lands has he got? He's just got the lordship. Okay, forfeit the Bay of Claws. Um, which I think is all of his lands. You will forfeit Wayfarer's Rest. Thank you very much. We'll dish all these back out to Hey, we got his stuff too. That's quite nice. We'll dish all this obviously back out to uh to to good, old fashioned, nice and strong. We wrote these? Oh, we can revoke them. Wait, if we revoke that, though, and he hasn't got a land in turtle, will that not just unland him? Yeah. Well, that works out pretty well. Expel the Andals. All promises with Andal settlers have their Andal minority expelled back to the narrow sea with you. Okay, cool. So what have we picked up, then? We've picked up... Man, we've got Lord of Sea Guard, Old Stones, Cape of Eagles. I'm going to keep that because that's part of our duchy anyway. Um, so we can kind of easily see what we've got. River Runner, quite powerful. We obviously need to do that. Pink Maiden. Acorns Ridge. We have that. So let's give that to... Are any of you first men and old gods? No. So let's make sure that we've got a nice... Let's go, uh, my religion, my religion, my culture, within our court. What about this guy? What about landing this fella, huh? I mean, he, I think he definitely deserves it. He's, he's incredibly powerful. No one's going to rebel against this fella. Right, let's do it. Uh, Acorns Ridge is yours, my friend. Boom. Now you are the noble of Acorns Ridge. And let's, uh, why don't we even marry off one of our relatives to him as well? So arrange marriage between him and Shale. We can marry off Shale, although she's got a good trait. We'll marry off her, Loam, because she's she's ugly. So we don't we don't really want her genes to kick around in the family. But Shale, I think we'll marry off matrilineally to someone. So uh, where did she go? Shale. It's going to be Shale. Let's restrict marriage. Let's go matrilineal marriage to preferably someone with some good stats. Uh, I'm looking to try and keep the dynasty alive a little bit. What is he? Oh, man, we want to find our find our religion. Come on. Let's not even check some of these some of these false pretenders. 
What have we got then? Uh, this guy's quick. We've got powerful. Uh, first man. Old gods. Highborn. Willard. Welcome aboard. And we'll also land our hand of the king there because he has a good amount of stewardship. Obviously, more taxes as a result. So we can give you the high lordship of wayfarers. Rest. There you go. So in all of this. Oh my god, that was the old lands of... Oh, shit. That was the old lands of House Vance who have five living members. Should we stomp them out? Rosamund is married. So she's gone. Uh, we've got Lucian. And then she's still alive. And uh, so there's only Ebro's Hill. He's a bastard. So it's literally just this kid left. And he's in our prison. What if we were to execute him? we will upset rulers in Cape Wrath. Who cares? Who cares? Have him beheaded or have him hanged? He's a, he's a, he's a eight-year-old boy. I feel like let's just have him beheaded and be done with it. We're not quite that cruel. I mean, he's done nothing wrong. Just his ancestors are. There we go. I think that's actually the end of their dynasty then. So it's his... So that they're all dead. So she's married off to someone else, non-matrilineally. She's married off someone else, non-matrilineally. So there's those two. Uh, who am I missing? And then her? She's a rivers, though. Does she count? I don't believe they count, do they? I have no idea where these other ones are, because that's everybody. So, so you're dead. You're, de yeah, you're married off. I guess they must count. Because it'd be her and her, and then those two for four living members. Nice. Okay, we should also deal with this descendant as well. Otherwise, he could potentially become legitimized as a member of House Vance. So you also need to go on the list of people we need to kill off. How are the Tullys doing more to the point? Hey, you want me to uh, revoke them titles, huh? Damn, that's a shame. We could try and incite revolt from him and then do it that way. So somehow, during all of that war and all of those disputes, we did lose control of the gods for... No idea how. And we have lost control of Dari. Is that because they are... Mans... Oh, my God. I can't believe the Annals can also invade your vassals when you're during the Mega War. I feel like they're almost turning off the Mega War system in this scenario would make more sense. But then, it also does give the Annals a chance to break free. So, it would make sense. And we can revert their titles after the fact. But the fact that they can move in and try and... I mean, is there any way we can help out with that? I think we're just going to lose Dari permanently. Um, this one, though... And who are you under? So his... Oh, it's just his, his vassal, right? So we can declare war and obviously go to Jor Clem on that and take it all back. At which point I think he becomes our vassal. Yeah, that's not such a big deal then. So we can take that back. We managed to keep the round together. I'm actually genuinely quite surprised about that. 67. I thought this guy would have died years and years and years ago. Um, oh, sure. We're set for worship and all stones. I think we need to marry off... I wanted to take control of this guy and marry him off then. Um, you know what? We'll just take control of him now. He's got Old Gods Northman and she's powerful. She'd make for a good wife. Fuck it. And she's highborn as well. She's a Duke's... Uh, Lord of the White. Okay. That's actually quite good. Lord of the White Knife. We'll have to look that up in a second. That'll do. We're just on a non-aggression pact with Rob the Fearful and, uh, funnily enough, his wife. Weird that. How strange. Boom. There we go. Nice. That's, that's a good little alliance to get. So who was she? And he's the a Duke of a fair amount of Northern Land. That's a pretty good marriage. Moral authority is going... Higher and higher as we progress forward here. All we've got to do is try and overtake the moral authority of the Faith of the Seven, which we'll, I assume is at 100%, but we'll just very quickly check in the ledger, just make sure. Uh, so we're looking at Faith of the Seven is currently at, but look at this though. The authority of the Faith of the Seven is very, very high, but in terms of the size, the Old Gods is almost as large. So we are really making a comeback here to say that we had, you know, not much oral, moral authority beyond that. I mean, what did we have before? Like 30 or something like that? I'm thinking it might have even been in the, the, the tens at some stage. We're making, a, we're making a play, but it's going to be very difficult to keep all this together. I expect big wars like that happening frequently just while we stomp out some more of the uh, some more of our vassals, but we've done a very, very good job of removing some of these Andal Lords. We've almost annihilated one of our rival houses too. Let's go vassals who are not my religion, um, who are preferably also actually vassals, thank you. So yeah, we've done a pretty decent job. There are obviously still a lot of them, but if we also go to our religion, there's... More high lords of our religion, more dukes, I should say, of our religion, than are of the Andal religion. And kings are basically just dukes anyway at this stage, or the king tier in Seeker 2, Lord Paramount tier, they are basically just dukes anyway, because look at how little land he actually truly controls. Good work. I think we'll leave that one there for today, because I think we've done some great things for the realm. We've uh, destroyed so many of our Andal enemies, and I feel like tomorrow we're probably going to get that succession, and then we'll end up playing as Prince Soil, and hopefully we can start turning him into a great character. 29, so we're picking him up at about the same time we picked up with King Emmond. In the meantime, though, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Oh, leave me some feedback as well on whether or not you think we should add some mechanics that might allow us to punish the Andals a little bit more, even if it's just maybe increasing their revolt risk so that in turn we could obviously revert their titles and maybe implementing, I don't know, Andal tax that increases their revolt risk massively, gives us some gold. That way it does kind of make sense. I think it's thematically accurate. I think it's historically accurate. But that way it also does allow us sort of in, uh, in, indirectly access to those revocation mechanics because there's no way we can do that right now. So, and it also just makes sense that, the, you know, this constant invading force, we just got to sit here and take it basically. So let me know what you think about, about an idea like that. And if you've got any ideas, of course, send them over to the comment section 
should send them into Discord too. And uh, I'll, I'll see if I can implement some feedback before tomorrow's episode. Thank you all for watching. And more importantly, let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made the series possible in the first place. A big thank you to Aiden W, Alchemia, Anthony Gawley, Asuna Kirito, at Moses Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hofflin, Chesty, Crotus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Fakuna Vasquez, Ghost of Protocol, Gogola, Sarik, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kaden Carter, Michael Mullen, My Name Isn't Dio, Muskratful, Nat Buskus, Number One, Necrophil and Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Richard Clark, Scott, Skaz, Smegma Stain, Somnus, The Forsaken One, T-Bag Cruz, Tom Terror 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuus Backers, Void Prince Kibo, William Green, and Zazzy. 7011. Thank you guys all for your support at the Insanity Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making YouTube possible. And a thank you as well goes out to Uwu, Daddy, Asro, Adam Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Attila, Austin Taylor, Bordoon, Ben Trope, Esmus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, Corey CA, David Van Diepen, Don, Dunk Honey 2 and 7, Emerald Beam, Exploding Knees, Gaz, Genji Zerko, Gothamo, Grey, Hajidamar, Icarus, Icy the Grey, Ida C, Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, James Shea, Jason Sushu, Jose, Yoran DeVries, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Luan and Thomas, Luke Wallace, Mustolp, Monty, Mostly Sampson, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nostrus, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Organized Confusion, Pan Sammy, Panther Pearl, Payback 1 through 7, Peyton Dennis, Rosh Nolagart, Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sagatair, Sam Kears, Shari, Smirtworm, Smooth Octopus, Soy Crudy, Super Nanny 089, The Insane Pickle, The One Ring, Valonkri, Varagon, Voodoo Member, Will Wade, Wilson Tef, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach, and Zico too. Thank you all for your support. See you guys all tomorrow.